Is evolution fake? The question of creation and creator has been going on since the beginning of civilization. Every religion has got a different theory on how the world came into existence and who were the first humans. While some propose a recent origin of life on earth, others suggest a timeline of millions of years. Based on the chronology of biblical events, religious philosophers and scientists propose their own date of creation. One of them was Newton, who proposed the date of creation as 4000 BC, which is not too far from the date proposed by Johannes Kepler, 3992 BC. According to a prevalent belief in the 17th and 18th centuries, the world was created 6000 years ago. But then, this theory came into conflict with the Eastern traditions, where the timeline goes millions of years in the past. As scientific data developed, Lord Kelvin proposed, under proper geological data, that the Earth is around 20 to 100 million years old. It was not until Charles Darwin, an English naturalist, went on several expeditions around the world and found the correlation between the character and traits of different organisms similar to each other that gave us the theory of evolution and eventually solved many mysteries. Today, let's look at the brief chronology of the events from the primordial age to now and see if evolution is scientifically correct. My name is Siddharth and you're watching The World of Science. Darwin catalogued many animals and their behavior and found that each species was well suited to its environment and role. He also found out that the traits of African monkeys shared similarities with humans more than any other animal. This led him to conclude that all beings are interrelated and share a common origin. He wrote down his theory of natural selection and many other things in one of the biggest works in the field of science on the origin of species. Now, before we understand Darwin's position, let's look at the very foundations of his theory. Genetics is the study of the mechanism of inheritance. Hereditary characteristics move from one individual to their offsprings through genetic materials. Dutch microbiologist Antony van Leeuwenhoek studied the human sperm and named them animalcules. He also believed that each sperm had the potential for a new life in a woman's womb. In 1866, Grigor Mendel, popularly known as the father of genetics, proposed that heredity is controlled by particles, also known as germinal units or factors that are present in all cells. And reproductive cells, also known as gametes, carry these factors from one generation to the next. Not much later, in 1868, Darwin himself proposed the theory of pangenesis, suggesting that tiny particles known as pangene are formed in each part of the body and travel via blood to the gametes. Now we know that heredity is controlled by genes, which are a definite segment of the chromosomes present in the nucleus of gametes. These genes are composed of sequences of DNA and proteins and they determine the character and nature of the offspring. The transfer of these hereditary traits is the most significant proof of the common origin of different organisms on the planet. Now back to the original question, how did life begin on Earth? According to scientists, there are four requirements for the life to begin on Earth. Number one, the primordial atmosphere supporting the conditions for genesis. Number two, the right amount of necessary chemicals. Number three, enough energy source. And number four, adequate amount of time for life to grow. According to fossil studies of cyanobacteria and carbonates present in the rocks, it can be estimated that life on Earth began around 3.7 billion years ago, and Earth itself formed around 4.6 billion years ago. So there was about a billion year gap between the formation of Earth and the emergence of the first life on the planet. The primitive atmosphere consisted of hydrogen, water vapor, ammonia and methane. The energy requirement was fulfilled by solar radiation, electrical storms and volcanic eruptions. Eventually the Earth cooled down and the water vapor condensed and it rained for like millions of years. This long lasting rain created seas and lakes containing salts dissolved from rocks. Eventually, these water bodies became life pools where the first organisms developed. The very first theory on the origin of life was known as abiogenesis. It says that life originated from non-living materials spontaneously. For example, frogs were believed to have spontaneously been generated from mud. 
Spontaneous generation was taken as a scientific fact for two millennia. This theory comes from the belief that insect larvae could develop on rotten meat on their own so they can arise spontaneously. But then this ridiculous theory was later disproven by Italian biologist Francesco Redi in 1680. The question of how life originated remained unanswered till the 19th century. And then came the apparent Haldane theory, which is now the most widely accepted theory of creation given by Russian biochemist Alexander Oparin and English biologist J.B.S. Haldane. They particularly worked on the idea given by Darwin himself. The idea is that life came from non-living material because the conditions in the primitive environment were favorable and totally different from the current conditions. As Darwin said, warm little pond with all sorts of ammonia and phosphoric salts, light and heat were present and protein compounds were ready to undergo still more complex changes. Life on Earth is believed to have originated from a collection of chemicals that underwent a chemical reaction. During this process, atoms combine to form inorganic molecules and then into organic monomers. These monomers further combine to form large polymers and then aggregated and organized to form living matter. This theory was experimentally proven by Stanley L. Miller in 1953 through the famous Urey Miller experiment. This experiment recreated primitive earth conditions and produced amino acids, fatty acids and bases using ammonia, water, methane and hydrogen in laboratory conditions. The first organisms on earth were heterotrophs basically organisms that were not capable of producing their own food and relied on the fermentation of other organic compounds for energy. On the other hand, autotrophs, which were capable of producing their own food, developed much later. Autotrophs began producing food through photosynthesis, which resulted in the production of oxygen as a byproduct. The production of such a large amount of oxygen caused a significant change in the atmosphere structure. As a result, many organisms that were dependent on heterotropic consumption died in one of the biggest extinction events known as the Great Oxygenation Event. Oxygen changed into ozone by reacting with UV lights that later on gave us the ozone layer. Eventually, the oxygen produced underwent a chemical reaction with UV light transforming into ozone and creating an ozone layer around us. With cellular differentiation, unicellular organisms evolved into multicellular organisms and the story moved forward. Every organism has a similar genetic code, a similar life process and a similar response to stimulus, all of which follow the laws of heredity. These similarities indicate that we all have common ancestors and are governed by the same code that has evolved over time. Take for example the stages of evolution that can be seen in the number of heart chambers in different animals. Fishes have two, frogs have three, and we have four. Similarly, birds and insects both have wings, but they have different structures. Or the structures of four limbs in many vertebrates is similar, but then their functions vary. Also, many animals have non-functioning organs, like the third eyelid in cats and dogs and many other animals, and one of the most popular examples, the appendix in humans. These organs are the remnants of ancestral organs that were useful in the past but now are redundant. We humans still have our tailbones in the back, which indicate our relation with our distant cousins, velociraptors. I'm just kidding, it's apes. Now, here comes the most talked about feature in the theory of evolution, Darwin's natural selection. As the number of organisms rapidly increases, the availability of food and space gets limited and a struggle for existence begins. In this struggle, only those species will survive that have favorable variations and adaptations according to their environment. These species will be able to reproduce and over many generations, the accumulation of variations in that species will lead to a new species. Additionally, in 1901, Dutch botanist Hugo de Vries proposed that a new species can arise in a single generation due to random mutations in the genetic structure. Life first originated in the oceans, which then slowly moved to land, giving rise to amphibians and reptiles. In the Jurassic period, mammals evolved from reptiles. 
The insectivore mammals gave rise to primitive primates called prosimians such as lemurs. From these prosimians, higher primates called simians emerged which we today recognize as apes and monkeys. Then the evolution of apes diverged from the lineage of Parapithecus, a primate that lived during the Oligocene period 40 million years ago. They were replaced by Diropithecus africanus during the Miocene period roughly 23 million years ago. And this common ancestor gave rise to chimpanzees and gorillas. After this, hominids, the modern ape evolution started in Asia and Africa. They named these hominids Ramapithecus and Sivapithecus in India and Caniapithecus in Africa. The earliest human-like species, Australopithecus africanus, emerged during the Pliocene period, roughly 5.4 to 2.4 million years ago. Around 2.5 million years ago, the human lineage separated from their non-human relatives, chimpanzees. This separation marked the first appearance of Homo habilis. Then 200,000 years ago, the first modern human form emerged. But it wasn't until 100,000 years ago that this human form became predominant. During the late Pleistocene period, Homo neanderthalensis, also known as Neanderthals, inhabited Earth around 100,000 to 34,000 years ago. The earliest fossils of modern humans, referred to as Cro-Magnons, date back to around 35,000 years ago. And then the fully developed form of Homo sapiens sapiens, the modern humans, came much later, around 25,000 years ago. This journey of evolution has spanned millions of years and has undergone numerous changes. As time passes, species evolve and new species, which share a common ancestry, emerge. However, we sometimes tend to misunderstand certain aspects of this theory, causing us to distort its meaning. For instance, we often assume giraffes have longer necks because they didn't have shorter plants in their region. However, that's not entirely accurate. Giraffes did not directly pass on the genes for longer necks to their offsprings. Instead, long ago, there was a certain species of giraffe that had a genetic mutation that caused them to have a longer neck. Now, since these new species of giraffes have the advantage of feeding on tall trees, they are more likely to survive and pass on their genes to the next generation. In contrast, giraffes with shorter necks would not have the same advantage and might not survive. Similarly, evolution is often associated with the concept survival of the fittest. However, this does not mean that only the strongest animals survive, which is pretty evident in nature. Like it or not, evolution is a truth. It does not force you to reject your principles and beliefs. It provides us with the history of our ancestors, interweaving all the beings into a single fabric and revealing the bigger picture of reality. Even if you believe in divine creation, Evolution doesn't go against you. In fact, it can bring you closer to the truth. While there are many mysteries surrounding the origin of life, we can be certain that it began with the right conditions and proper timing. We also know that all living organisms are interrelated and share a common origin. That being said, evolution is not fake. If you found this video interesting, please share it with your friends. Make sure you subscribe to the World of Science. Until next time, Stay scientific.